Well, hello there. Welcome back to day two of our acrylic pouring extravaganza. I'm so excited that you could join me. Uh, today is going to be uh, a lot of fun, I think. A little bit different. We're going to get uh, kind of focused down and actually do some mixing of paint. Uh, I'm going to share two different formulas with you. These are very simple formulas, but I designed them that way for a reason. I'm going to walk you through them, and uh, then I'm going to do a painting. So welcome, everyone. Uh, Sharon is here. Hey, Sharon and Linda. Novala is here. Great to see you, Novala. Lynn and uh, Linda. Again, another Linda. Uh, Carla is here. Awesome. So uh, Carla is watching from a car somewhere in Missouri. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Carla. I'm so happy you could uh, uh, jump in and, and say hi. And uh, Robin has joined us. JC is here. Hey, JC. And Monique is here. Thank. That's great. Thanks for joining us, Monique. So uh, I'm going to just talk a little bit about like a little brief overview of, we, of what we talked about yesterday. We went over a lot of different supplies, uh, a lot of different paints, kind of beginner paints, intermediate paints, a little bit into advanced paints, and then a couple specialty paints. We talked about um, some other supplies like cups and um, torches and silicone a little bit, and uh, some of my uh, favorite um, studio tools like freezer paper, all kinds of stuff. Um, but we didn't really get into the nitty gritty of anything. It was kind of an overview of what you need to get started. And uh, I wanted to cover all of that just because it's a very common question. A lot of people are really afraid to start uh, pore painting uh, because they don't know where to begin. They don't know what to get. Um, so we covered pretty much all of that yesterday. And um, if you didn't weren't able to join us yesterday, I will be sending out the replays. Uh, if you have uh, signed up to get the Canvas Coverage Cheat Sheet 2.0, um, I'll also give you the replay so you can check those out. And uh, there's going to be a lot of other awesome uh, bonuses in there, uh, downloadable resources. I've got two more for you today, or actually three perhaps, uh, that I'll share with you. Um, so, um, but that's a great thing to uh, sign up for. It's free, of course. You don't have to... Uh, uh, buy anything. All you have to do is give me your email so I can give you this, uh, give you the updates of when we go live and uh, you'll get access to the replay. So I'm going to drop a link in the comments here um, just in case you haven't signed up uh, for those resources yet. You can go check them out at www.acrylicpouringacademy.com forward slash live. And uh, it also has all the links to our extravaganza week. Uh, live videos here. So uh, it's a great page to go and check out. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing today, I just, I mentioned it just a second ago, but we're, I'm going to share with you two uh, different simple uh, paint mixing formulas, and uh, I'm going to walk you through them. I designed these formulas for my mini course, um, foolproof uh, pouring mini course, and I designed them to be extremely easy um, to measure your ingredients very accurately and a very simple way to get uh, the proper consistency with your paint. So we're going to be working with a glue today, a glue-based medium. I'll also talk about Floetrol a little bit and how it relates to this pouring medium. Uh, but then we're going to mix up a paint. I'll show you exactly how to do it. And then we're going to make a painting uh, using the glue-based medium and some craft paints. And uh, then I'm going to maybe add some silicone or dimethicone and we'll uh, torch it and get some cells. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. So, um, but again, I designed this uh, to be a very simple, easy to replicate formula um, because consistencies of our paint are very, very important. It's one of the most important parts of any technique in uh, acrylic pour uh, paint pouring, but um, it's very hard to uh, teach that over a video on YouTube or live like we're doing today. So I designed this uh, very simple system so you can uh, easily replicate uh, the proper consistency or at least get really close. And we're just aiming for really close with all of our, with everything we do really. Uh, we, do, we are not aiming for perfection. Um, you don't need to be perfect with any of this stuff. Just get really close or get, get as close as you can. And that's great. So uh, let me show you what I've got here. I've got some paints mixed up already. And I'll flip my camera in a second and we'll take a look at uh, another paint and I'll mix it up from scratch for you. 
And uh, I've got some cups here. We're going to layer for our uh, painting. I'm going to do a just a simple flip cup and maybe use two cups. So it's like a double flip cup. And I've got a canvas down here. It's all prepped and ready to go, a 12 by 16. And uh, I'll show you the colors. We'll walk through those. And uh, let's get started, I think. So, and by the way, uh, if you have any questions, just, just throw them in the uh, comments. I will be checking there. Um, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. So I don't see any questions yet. So let's get started. I'm going to flip the camera over. And um, here we go. So I've got uh, an apple barrel paint here. Yesterday I mentioned these are the cheapest paints you can get as far as I'm concerned, but they work really well. This is called Petunia Purple. Uh, it's a, just a pretty kind of a mid-value light purple color. I love purple, so I use it all the time. I've got one of my five and a half ounce souffle cups or snack cups right here. And we're gonna be using this to mix our paints in. So I'm gonna set those there for a moment. I've got three colors right here, and I'll go over these colors first. So uh, this one here is a, where is it? This is another apple barrel color. It's uh, called cloudless. It's a very light uh, blue color. Um, and all these paints are gonna be mixed the same exact way. Um, I've got a dark black here. And actually I kind of mix these together and I'll give you a tip if you're working with um, craft paints. And um, so I, I've, I had like about a half of a bottle of this jet black from Apple Barrel. I had some of this uh, amethyst from DecoArt, but I had used some before. So I just put some of the uh, DecoArt into the jet black and uh, made it about a full bottle. So I had about a had about a full bottle of the jet black, but it's actually a combination of the black and the uh, uh, amethyst. So, but it's about two ounces, and all these bottles are uh, two ounces of paint. So um, that's what's in here. It's a little mixture of uh, black and, and metallic purple. And I kind of did the same thing with this one. I had a little bit of my Inca gold, and I love this color. It's a very light. Um, pretty gold paint from Folk Art. And uh, I had a full bottle of this, uh, which is a Harvest Orange. So it was about maybe a half bottle of the Inca Gold. So I just filled it up with uh, some of the Harvest Orange and shook it up a little bit. But then I had two ounces of paint and I, I used that to make this kind of like an orange, a golden orange color. So those are our three colors, first of all, that I've already mixed up. Um, we've got a really dark color. We've got kind of a middle value, kind of a lighter uh, gold orange color. And we've got a pretty light blue color here. And uh, we're going to mix up this kind of mid value uh, petunia purple. And when I, when I pick colors, um, I like to have a, a value range. And value, uh, what that means is that's the lightness or darkness of a color. So black is the darkest you can get. So that's a very dark value. White is the lightest you can get. So that's a very light value. This isn't white. This is darker than that, but it's a very light value. So I like to have a contrast, a range of values. So I always like to have a, a pretty light color, a pretty dark color, and then a couple in, in the, the middle there, a couple in between. And uh, I don't do that for every single painting, but it's a good rule of thumb that I follow quite often. And that adds a lot of interest and contrast to your paintings, and it makes them much more interesting to look at. Uh, if you use all darks or you use all light colors or all mid-value colors, your paintings are going to come out kind of very boring. Uh, even though you, they might be very colorful and have a lot of different colors, if they're all in the same value range or very close in value, um, there's no contrast at all. And... Uh, they get very bored, like they get very boring to look at very quickly. So uh, contrast is what creates interest. Um, and I think value, the lightness and darkness of a painting, is almost more important than the actual colors of that painting. So, uh, and I'll talk about that a little more tomorrow. We're going to be talking about color things, color theory and values. So I'll get into that a little deeper tomorrow. But just to let you know, that's why I picked these particular colors. Um, I like a contrast with my colors. So let's mix up our petunia purple. Oops. And uh, I'll show you what we're going to do. So you could shake this a little bit if you want to, your craft paints. Probably a good idea. 
And then I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to dump the whole bottle right in the cup. And now I, I recommend trying this, especially if you're brand new to pouring or you haven't uh, been into pouring very long or you're confused about consistencies. Um, this is a great way to kind of uh, get a handle on, on paint consistency. And uh, I would try this for a couple of paintings. Uh, mix up your paints all this way, the same way, um, using uh, this particular method. So what I'm doing here is just emptying this out, trying to get as much paint as possible out of the bottle. You don't have to get every little last drop. And that's probably pretty good. Um, so let's see, I gotta pop that bubble. And now what I'm gonna do is fill this bottle up with our glue. So I've got some glue here. I'm gonna just use the, uh, the school glue and I'm gonna just put it right in the bottle and uh, fill it up. And kind of where the uh, paint started, so what this is, is one part paint and one part glue. So there we go. We've got a uh, one part glue. We're going to just squirt that right in our cup. So we've got four ounces now of paint and glue combined. So these five and a half ounce uh, uh, snack cups work great for this. They're almost the perfect size. And so I'm just going to, again, get as much of the glue and paint out as I can. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Just kind of tap it out a little bit. Just get as much as you can out of there. And so, and, and another thing is, uh, my style of painting, the way I like to do it, I like to measure everything. I like to have the same amount of float trawl, same amount of paint, same amount of glue in all of my paints. I don't like to eyeball it or guess. Um, and we'll get into this a little more too down the road on Thursday, because consistency of your ingredients, I think is very important. Having the same amount of each ingredient in your, in your paints, um, to me, it's very important. And I have a way of doing it uh, that it makes it very quick. And this is a pretty quick way right here. Um, but uh, that's one of the things that I like to uh, teach is be consistent with uh, your paints. And uh, your ingredients and how you mix your um, formulas up and things like that. So, um, because if you just guess in our eyeballing stuff, you just don't know. Uh, and if you get a great painting, you don't know what you did. Um, but if you measure everything and if everything is consistently all the same, then you can make corrections. You can make changes intelligently, fix problems and adjust things. But if you're always guessing and just uh, shooting from the hip, as they say, you're never going to know exactly what you're doing or what's in your paints. So we have emptied our glue into our cup. Now I'm going to just mix this up. Give this kind of a thorough mix. And we're going to take a look at the consistency. And there's one more step that we're going to follow here in, our, in this very simple formula. And before I show you the consistency, let's do one more thing. So I, I have my little cap here. So we have two ounces of paint, two ounces of glue. We've got our little cap. I'm going to take my water bottle right here, and these will work great, and just fill up my cap with water. And I've measured this before, and I talk about this in the course. This is half a teaspoon right here, half a teaspoon. And I'm going to just put this right in our bottle just like that. And I'm going to uh, screw the cap back on and I'm going to shake that up. And that's going to do a couple things. It's going to get kind of the paint and the water mixed together so we can kind of get the rest of the paint out of this bottle. And then I'm going to just let that sit there for a second. And we're going to take a look at our paint consistency. So I'm going to flip the camera. And let's see here. So here we go, let me get that centered. All right, so this is just the glue and just the paint. So I have not added any water yet. And I just wanna show you the consistency. 
And right there, we're getting quite a large mound, kind of like a mound on a mound, as it's uh, streaming off the stir stick back into the cup. And this is actually quite close to our the consistency we want for things like the flip cup and the ring pour. But we do want to add a little bit more of a little bit of water to thin this out a little bit more. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to take I'm going to take um, my bottle here that I have before. Let me show you. I'm just going to pour that into the cup of paint. And then I'm going to just stir that up. And it should be pretty darn close to what we are looking for. And I found that this, uh, this method works pretty good for most paint colors. With the metallics, that's a little different story. And I'll talk about that in a minute. You might need to add a little less water or no water uh, with the metallics. Because uh, the metallics are a little bit thinner uh, paint consistency in general. So just stir this up. I like to kind of turn the cup and stir the sides. You can scrape your stick off. Really mix it well. Mix the water in there really well. And now let's check our consistency. And that looks perfect to me. And again, we're not going for perfect, but that's pretty darn close to what I'm looking for. And that's a smallish mound. And then the paint and then the the mound kind of dissipates relatively quickly. So that is really what I'm looking for right there. And that is a, a very simple paint mixing formula. Now this is, uh, if you've been painting for a long time and you're comfortable with your um, ratios and you're comfortable with your paint mixtures, there's no need to do this. This is mostly for beginner or in intermediate painters that kind of struggle with getting the proper consistency. So um, if you're very comfortable with this, then you know by all means, just keep doing what you're doing. But this can be very helpful because it's, a, it's you know, very simple to follow. It's you know, one bottle of glue, it's one uh, bottle of paint, and then that cap full of water. I'm gonna flip back here. So, all right, so anyway, um, that is, uh, my very simple formula for, let me put this cap back on, my foolproof formula for mixing up craft paint and glue. Now I've got some paints here that I've mixed up before hand, and these are mixed with uh, craft paint and Floetrol. And it's basically the same thing. Let me show you this. Um, and I'll show you these colors. So this purple here is a metallic. So this is uh, folk art, tanzanite, um, but folk art or deco art metallics. Um, this is another folk art metallic. All of the metallics usually are a little thinner uh, in consistency. So uh, what I recommend if you're gonna use uh, metallics with the glue or the Floetrol, mix up one of your metallics first and see what the consistency is before adding any water. Then you can uh, mix up your other paints and compare them together. Um, and what I like to do is my thinnest paint, or if there's one that's thinner, like the metallics, I will adjust all the other colors to be uh, the same consistency as my thinnest color. That doesn't mean it's too thin. It just means that um, that's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm using to compare all my other colors to. So let me show you the consistency of our purple here. I'll just grab another stick. And I did the same exact thing to mix up this color. I used, uh, I just dumped in our tanzanite, one bottle of this, and then I filled up the bottle with Floetrol. And I actually put Floetrol in a smaller squirt bottle like this, and then fill that up in the cup, and then mix them together. So this is one part paint, one part Floetrol. And that's um, kind of a special recipe that I use for this particular uh, formula. My normal um, flow trial recipe I'll talk about in a, perhaps tomorrow or a, a later time, or perhaps I'll talk about it later. But um, 
but I just want to focus on this, you know, very simple foolproof formula. So let me flip over and I'll show you uh, this consistency. There we go. So you'll notice, uh, and one thing I want to mention is the flow trawl and the paint feel a little different than the glue and the paint. Uh, the glue is a little like thicker. It feels a little stickier kind of when you stir it. It's just a different feeling. Um, so don't let that throw you off. Uh, what we're really looking for is the um, kind of how fluid the paint is. But then our second test is the drizzle test. So let me kind of stir this up and then I'll show you what this looks like. And so here we go. This is drizzling off the stick, very similar to the glue. The metallics look a little different. That's another thing to keep in mind. Because of all that shiny stuff in there, they can look a little uh, different when, they, when the paint streams back into the cup. But we're, it's very close. We're getting that small mound, and then the paint uh, um, kind of you know, flows back into the cup. So that is the consistency we're looking for. And that's my normal consistency. Small mound for uh, ring pours, straight pours, uh, flip cups, and uh, floating cups, things like that. Um, and it can vary a tiny bit. It could be a tiny bit thicker than this. It could be a tiny bit thinner than this. But we're looking for this. Uh, we're in this, in this ballpark, this small mound. And then the... Uh, the paint makes a small amount and then uh, flows back into the cup. So that is the flow trawl. And uh, there's no water in this again. Now this one here, this crazy lime green that I have from, uh, let me show you this. I mixed up this crazy lime green from Apple Barrel. And this I had to add quite a bit of water to. Probably uh, two capfuls into this uh, paint. And all these paints will be t uh, slightly different, um, but this one in particular was a little uh, on the thicker side. But again, when we stream it in, we're looking for that same consistency, that small mound. So if you want to try the flow trawl formula, I recommend it. If you want to get into the flow trawl, give this a shot. Get a couple craft paints, um, mix them up like this. Uh, get a metallic and see what it looks like without adding any water and then match your other paints so you get this slight mound. So there we go. That is our foolproof uh, paint mixing formula. And I'm going to flip back to the big camera now and uh, to help you out, I have, I've written down all the steps on a download sheet right here. It's a the foolproof mixing formula. At the top I talk about the glue formula. And then at the bottom, I talk about the, the flow trial formula. So now, you know, I don't recommend you mix your paints like this every single time for every single painting. Uh, it's basically to just uh, teach you and so you can learn the proper consistency of the paint, what it feels like. And that's really important, the feel of the paint, what it looks like, what it feels like. Um, so you can practice kind of doing the right things um, and then see how your paintings react when you use that paint mixed to the proper way with the same amount of ingredients in your paints. So I hope that helps. Um, and, and it hope you can um, maybe try this out, test it out, see what happens. If you've been struggling with uh, your paints or your consistencies, I think this will help you a whole lot. Um, and, uh, and just give it a shot and see what you think. So I'm going to uh, quickly cover these paints up, the flow trial paints, and we're going to dive into making a painting with our um, with our glue-based paints. So and then I'm going to check and see if there are any questions first. So let me flip back here. I'm going to just set these aside. Okay, so let me move these aside and then I will quickly check and see if there are any questions. And uh, Donnie's got a question. Uh, can you use a paint mixed with glue and another with Floetrol in the same painting? That's a great question. Uh, I try not to, to mix the pouring mediums 
in the same painting. Um, that's not to say you can't do it, um, but you know I've done some paintings back in my earlier days that they went fine, they look great, and I think I had glue-based paints in there and troll based paints in there. Um, but after the painting dried, I had a lot of problems. Parts of it would just peel right off, parts of it would crack. Um, so I tend to try to stick with the same uh, mixing formula for um, every, any pa particular painting. So if I'm gonna, just, if I'm gonna be doing a glue-based painting, use all glue-based um, pouring mediums in that paint. And same for Floetrol. Um, use all Floetrol-based pouring mediums. Now there's some people that like to mix Floetrol and glue together in the same uh, formula or same formula. And um, I've tried that. I don't really like the results too much, um, at least my results. Not to say that you can't get great paintings with that, um, but I, I tend to stick to just one, one at a time, one thing, Floetrol or glue and uh, just stick with that. So, but that's a great question though, Donna. Um, and then Linda is asking, what about Liquitex? And uh, Liquitex, you can definitely use in your, in your uh, pouring formulas, in your paint mixing. Um, this is a very particular type of formula uh, that's basically designed just so you can get the, the like dial in your consistencies. Um, and I like to use the, the craft paint bottles because we can measure in them and use them as our like uh, our part sizes. So, but when we get into mixing uh, paints with like the tube paints, like the Liquitex Amsterdam, all the tube paints that I normally use, I do a totally separate uh, type of a mixing a system for that. And uh, I might talk about that a little later. It's a little more advanced. Uh, you have to make a couple tools for that. And I go over that actually in my brand new course that's gonna be coming out, my a fluid art, fluid art foundations course, and it covers that in detail. So, um, but that's how I normally mix my paints. This is uh, mostly a, a beginner, intermediate technique for mixing your paints, just so you can discover what that proper consistency is. Um, and when, for people just starting out and get a few paintings under your belt, mixing your paints this way, it makes it so much easier uh, to mix, your paints down the road when you're using their two paints in Floetrol and uh, larger quantities of paint because you have a feel now for what that proper consistency is. So hope that helps, Linda. And uh, let's see here. And uh, I've got a couple more questions. Well, let me go through these questions. And uh, Kathy has got a question. Any thoughts on Vivid PM untinted base? Um, Vivid is a pouring medium uh, by uh, Color Art, and uh, it works great for um, mixing up their um, powders. I don't really like to use that with acrylic paints because it's kind of expensive, um, but it works great for the powders. So, um, and so when you're mixing the mic powders and things like that, um, and I don't really do that. I don't do a ton of powders and things like that in my standard uh, paint mixing. I, I, I get into that more with like the bloom techniques and things. Um, but that's more of an advanced ingredient. Um, if you want to play around with it, feel free to. Um, we probably won't be covering that in this week's uh, extravaganza classes though. And uh, But great question, Kathy. And then Kara is asking, is silicone oil the best way to achieve cells? And the answer, my answer is no, not at all. I think the best, the best way to achieve cells is using uh, Floetrol and the proper consistency. And that's how I like to make my cells with most of my paintings. But we are gonna be using silicone today to make some cells. And it is a great way to get cells with the glue-based pouring mediums. So we're gonna be covering that in detail in a minute, but that's a great question. That's a very confusing uh, question because a lot of people think silicone is the only way to get cells and it is definitely not. It is one way. Uh, it's not my favorite way, but um, it can create some beautiful cells, but so can, uh, there are many other ways to, to create cells without, without silicone. So great uh, question, Kara. And uh, we'll look at cells without silicone a little later this week, probably Friday. We'll do some uh, 
paint some paint demos using just Floetrol and paint, and we'll get a whole lot of cells. So, all right. Let's see here. And uh, Linda is saying um, some people use Flo, uh, I think Floetrol and Liquitex. Yes, Liquitex pouring medium, um, for sure. I use Floetrol and Liquitex together. I don't really use Liquitex by itself. I always use it in combination with Floetrol. The Floetrol really helps gener generate cells. The Liquitex helps enhance those Floetrol cells. Um, and that's a great way to get cells too. So um, I use a combination of the two. Um, some people like to use Liquitex by itself. You can definitely do that. Uh, you're not gonna get as many cells though. Liquitex by itself doesn't really promote lots of cell generation. But uh, great, yeah, great comment, Linda. And by the way, there's a million different uh, paint mixing formulas. Um, many of them work, I'm sure. A lot of them probably don't work. Many of them are overly complex, in my opinion. I like to keep things as simple as possible to get the results I'm looking for. So this is just kind of a, you know, an FYI. Um, I like to keep things simple. I like to only use things that um, will, will get me the result I want without overcomplicating it with a bunch of different products and ingredients just for the sake of saying I have them in there. Um, I think a lot of formulas are bloated with way too much stuff in there. And, um, and just because there's all these different things and if I throw all the things in there, well, obviously it's gonna be better, right? Well, not necessarily, in my opinion anyway. Um, my go-to formula is two ingredients and it's Floetrol and paint, you know, plus water, which is kind of not an ingredient. Um, and that's it. And I get amazing paintings with just those two ingredients. You don't need, you know, 30 different ingredients uh, in your formulas. So um, some people really like the super complex formulas. Um, I don't particularly like that. I do use complex formulas, but there's always a reason for it. And uh, um, so if you're following me or you'd like to learn more from me, just realize I, I like to keep things as simple as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if, if I use complex uh, ingredients or, or things like that, there's usually a reason for it, not just, just to throw in the kitchen sink. So, um, all right. So let's see here. Let's get back into um, uh, creating a painting. How about that? So I don't see any other cell or uh, questions at the moment. And um, let's see here. And JC is saying um, cells are made from different densities of paint. And that is correct um, for sure. You know, different densities um, of pigments in your paints um, help generate cells. The Floetrol helps uh, enhance all that stuff. So um, cells are created by a combination of ways. I don't really like to get into the super scientific uh, side of, of acrylic paint pouring. Um, you can, of course, you can go deep dive into that. Um, there's the Raleigh Taylor, you know, um, instability thing or whatever. It's all of the scientific stuff. And of course it has merit and it's important. I like to focus on how to get it and make it as simple as possible and as easy as possible to understand. Um, densities are, uh, can be a complex topic. Um, and I think a lot of people overthink it. Um, I like to just um, make it very simple mix all my paints to the proper consistency, throw in some metallics, which help generate cells too, um, have Floetrol in there, uh, do proper you know, pouring technique, have the right amount of paint on your canvas is also another great, big, important um, thing you have to have right. And then just let the cells come. So, um, so that's, yeah, def densities are very important, but I don't try to, I don't like to dwell on them too much. But that's a great point. Thanks, JC. And uh, all right. So let's take a look at our paints now. I'm going to open these up. I've got my black and purple-ish color.
Hi there. Sorry. I think I just got kicked out of my live stream. Oops. Well, I'm back now, I hope. So, um, cool. If you can uh, let me know. Give me a, just a thumbs up if uh, you can see and hear me. That would be important. So, all right. Let's see here. Uh, Donna says I'm frozen. Am I frozen? Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Monique, thank you. I'm back. Awesome. All right. I don't know what happened there. I guess I was getting a little too excited about consistencies and densities, perhaps. So, okay, so I'm going to move some of these paints aside here. And uh, I'm going to grab my canvas. And here's my canvas that we'll be working with. It's a 12 by 16 and uh, just a regular um, kind of bargain canvas. I've prepped the back. Kind of like we talked about yesterday, I put tape on there and I've got my little cup hooks. And I've also spritzed the back, uh, spritzed in the corners a little bit with a, with a squirt bottle. Just a little bit of water in my squirt bottle. And then one blast on the, on the center section and it tightens, up, it tightens up my canvas. And I like to do that. I like to work on a really uh, tight canvas. The, 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 the cheaper value pack canvases can get kind of loose. So just a little spritz of water on the back, tightens them right up and uh, uh, really quickly too. You don't have to let it dry. Um, I just like spritz it and then I start painting. So I've got my torch here. We're gonna be using the torch in a little bit. So let me flip, uh, let me flip the camera and I might have to adjust the, uh, the um, let's see here, let me flip it. I gotta zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay, cool. So here's my 12 by 16. We've got our colors. I've got the black, the dark one, the uh, kind of orangish gold color, our light blue and our purple. And the other thing I like about these colors in particular, um, well, we've got 50-50 a, a, a here. The blue and the black are kind of cool colors. Um, you could also say the purple, this is a, a red violet color. It's also kind of in the cool category, but it kind of crosses the line between cool and warm. Now our gold here is very warm. This is a very warm color. So we've kind of got a, you know, three coolish looking colors and a warm color. Um, I like to have uh, a variance in uh, color temperature too in a lot of my paintings, not all the time, but I like that, um, to have kind of a, most of my colors cool or warm and then have a accent color, which is the opposite um, color temperature. So that's a little more about our, our color stuff. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. So let's see here. So what I wanna do first, we're gonna be using our coconut milk uh, hair serum to create cells in this painting. So I'm gonna add some of this to my paints. And I like to, take uh, this stuff out of here and put it in a smaller little bottle. And uh, I like these little needle um, tip bottles. You can get these on Amazon. They work great. Um, I think they come in a pack of like uh, 50 or something, so you'll never run out of them, <laughs> but they're pretty affordable um, and they work great. You can really control your, your the size of your drops and uh, really dial them in. So, and I wanna keep one of these paints without any uh, coconut oil because I'm gonna use one color as a base coat color. And you don't wanna put any paint that has silicone or dimethicone right on your canvas. Uh, it can create um, uh, cavities and allow your uh, canvas to show right through. So we want a base coat on here, but I don't want any silicone or dimethicone in that, in that base paint. So I think I'll, just move my black. I'll use the black as my base color. So I'm not gonna put any silicone in there, but I will put some in all three of these colors. And I'll probably put between three and four drops. So here we go. One, two, maybe four drops. Okay. 
and then we'll stir those up pretty good. Um, I don't like to I like to spread the drops around. Don't just put them right on top of each other because then you'll get just this one great big blob of silicone and it can be kind of hard to break it up. So we're going to stir this up and I'm going to give it just kind of a medium stir. You can feel free to stir quite a bit. I think that's pretty good. There is a, there's a lot of debate whether the more you stir, the smaller the cells get. Um, I have, I've seen that happen with a lot of stirring. The cells get kind of small, but I've also done a lot of stirring and the cells are still quite large. So I don't really know um, if that's the case or not. Like the more you stir, the smaller the cells. I just give it a, a good stir and then call it, and pretty much call it good. So, and uh, so that's is pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty good stir. I want to kind of get the silicone mixed in to the paint, um, kind of mixed throughout, kind of evenly. So there we go. That's a pretty good stir, I'll say. So, and uh, so here we go. We've got two cups. I'm going to do a double flip cup with this one and a 12 by 16 canvas uh, for a flip cup. I'd need about seven and a half ounces of paint to cover a 12 by 16. Um, but when I'm using the glue based medium and silicone, um, I like to add a little bit more um, just to help me so I don't have to tilt so much and it will kind of keep my cells uh, nice and round a little bit more or gives me the opportunity to do that. So I've got these two cups. I've marked them both at four ounces. So I'm gonna use eight ounces on this 12 by 16, uh, plus a little bit of paint for the base coat, which I have right here. Bring that back over. So I'm using a little bit more than what I would normally use in my canvas coverage cheat sheet. And that one is right here. I'll show you that. Um, so here's my cheat sheet. That's probably hard for you to see but this is the 2.0 version. And so a 12 by 16 for a flip cup, I use about seven and a half ounces. For a ring pour, I'd use about six ounces. I like to use less paint for ring pours. And then for a base coat, I have on here like about one, in a, one and three quarters ounces. So roughly one and a half to two ounces of paint for a base coat. I don't measure that out. It's just kind of a, a nice reminder, like how much paint I need for that. So you can kind of estimate it a little easier. Um, instead of dumping on a ton. I, I'm notorious for putting on way too much <laughs> on my base coats and then scraping it off. So I'm trying to get better about that. So, all right, so we're gonna fill up both of these cups. And what I wanna do is fill them up both differently. So I think I'll start with the orange in one. Just put a little orange in there. And then the other one, maybe I'll start with the blue. Let me spread these apart. And I like to make my cups different. Um, I just think it adds more interest to your uh, flip cups if you're doing like more than one cup. And on the orange, I think I'll put a little black. And maybe I'll put, I'll put a little black in here too. And let's see, maybe I'll put a little orange in here. I want both color, I want all the colors in both cups but I might be using a little different amounts in each cup. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little black in between there. I'm not really worried too much about um, any particular layer order, like light to dark or dark to light. Um, I'm just kind of putting them in randomly. A flip cup is very unpredictable, so you never know what's going to happen, really. Oop, I just put in a bunch of purple on top of the purple. Probably shouldn't have done that, but too late now. And I'm at my four ounces right there, so I'm almost there here with the second cup. And I'll put a little bit of uh, black in right on top. So there we go. We've got our cups filled with a bunch of different paint. 
And uh, let's see, let me move my paints out of the way. And I'm going to, um, actually what I want to do, I got a little couple, couple little drips. I'm just going to wipe these up a little bit. Normally I wouldn't, but since I have silicone in the paint, I don't want to leave any um, excess paint on there. And so here we go. I'm going to spread out some of my base coat. And I use my big knife for this. And again, I don't have any silicone or dimethicone in this color. So here we go, just a, th a thinnish layer. You don't have to use a, a ton of paint. I might have to add a little more, actually. And I like to do flip cups with the glue and the silicone. Um, you can get some very interesting, fun paintings this way. I like this, the way the cells look uh, with the, the glue and silicone. Um, they look very cool, and I really like the look of them. Um, and we'll see what happens. So you never quite know. This is kind of a weird color palette. So uh, hopefully it'll turn out really nice. So I'm going to just go the old school way of putting my cups on the uh, canvas and just flip them over. Kind of like that. And I'll just let those uh, sit there a second. And let's see, maybe I'll check and see if there are any uh, questions that might have come in. Well, those sit there for a moment. And let's see here. No, I don't see any at the moment. So, all right. So time to pull our cups off. So I'm just going to pull them right back. And uh, let's see what happens. I just like to tap out the cup a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Now the next one. Oh, I like that gray color we got. It's a lot of mixing in there. But I like that gray color quite a bit. Okay. So that was mixed, that was probably the blue and the black together to get this interesting gray color. Um, I quite like it. Now, at this stage, we've got our, our big paint puddle. We can expand it a little bit, which I like to do first. Kind of move it around the canvas a little. And um, we're not getting a lot of cells yet. And that's okay. I like that. The torch is really what's going to bring them to life. We got a couple here, here and there, popping up. Now at this stage, you could decide if you wanted to do lip drags or things like that. Uh, I really don't mind, I don't really mind these kind of more plain looking flip cups. Because we're going to torch them, the cells are really going to take center stage. So I kind of like these kind of broad, larger areas of kind of blended color. Um, and they're, they're real, they're relatively, you know, boring in a way, but that's just fine with me because the cells are really going to create all of the interest. So at this stage, what I like to do is tilt over at least two or, or, or more corners before I torch. And, uh, so I'm going to maybe move, I got a lot of paint right here. I'm going to 
tilt over this corner first. And I like to tilt because after we torch, the cells have a, a tendency to get really stretched out of shape if you move them around too much. So I'm going to go on this corner, I think, next. So I'm just, this is my standard kind of tilting method, my three uh, phase tilting. This is phase two right now. I'm just covering the edges and the uh, corners. And here we go. I'm going to move over to this one. And maybe keep that big cell for now. It's kind of big and crazy, but I like it a little bit. We've got, I like the way the orange is kind of spread out through the, throughout this painting. Okay, so we're just stretched the whole thing. And, uh, but I didn't want to, I don't want to take off too much paint. So just enough to cover the canvas. And now I'm going to wipe my fingers off quickly. And let's see here. I see a question from, uh, let's see, where was that? Uh, Linda is asking, um, do you use other colors for your base other than white or black? Yeah, I use all kinds of different colors, Linda. Uh, I like to use the colors in my painting a lot of the time. So I'll just mix up a little extra and uh, pour some of that as the base coat. The nice thing about that is, uh, if your painting lends itself to like negative space, um, those colors are already in your painting. So it works out really well. Um, so I use a wide range of colors for my base coats. Okay. So, all right, let's get our torch and give this a shot. So I really like what's happening. I think it's a, a beautiful painting as it is. I love this stripe. This is our barrier line kind of between our two cups, which I quite like a lot. I really like the color palette, actually. It's doing some cool things. I love this orange right in here. Um, but let's do some torching and see what happens. So I've got my torch. I like to hold my torch upright like this and, and pull the trigger with my thumb. And I like to start high and then work down closer to the, the canvas and then bring the torch back up. So, and you'll notice the cells, you'll see them kind of pop open. And then I like to let them uh, kind of expand on their own a little while. So I'll be doing this torching in stages. So let's start and see what happens. And uh, so there we got some of the cells popping up. I'm gonna go over here. There's a bunch of them right here that popped up. Right in here. And I like to do smaller areas and then uh, move away from them to see what the cells are going to do. Uh, so get, we're getting a lot of reaction. Um, so I'll let that go for a minute and just see what happens. And uh, let's see here. Kara is saying that um, the camera looks slightly out of focus. Um, and so is Navala. Let me try something. Um, I'm gonna, I'll try to re, uh, I'll log in again with my second camera. Maybe that will help things. So let me leave here. And while those cells are developing, well, well, I'll do this and see if I can fix the problem. That's the, the thing I don't like about streaming is it's always a little uh, tricky and kind of glitchy. And we're relying on, you know, the internet. So let's see here. Okay, so let me try this. Let 
Okay. And uh, so we'll go back there in a second. And things have, are looking pretty good. Let's take a look. Hopefully we've uh, corrected the camera. It might be a tiny bit blurry at just the beginning. Hopefully it will clear up. And uh, hey, Barbara, Barbara's joined us. Hi, Barbara. And uh, so the cells have grown quite a bit. Uh, we've got these kind of clusters of cells, which I like. Um, this one's kind of lonely down here. I'm gonna do a little more torching around that one. Lots of things popped up around here. Maybe around this big one too. Maybe to kind of tie these together. I like to leave like smaller areas of uh, rest in between these cell clusters. Um, and uh, it's hard to kind of control because you have to kind of just see what the cells do, let them kind of develop a little while before you move on and torch again. So I, I, I might try a little bit more down here and then a little bit over there. Ooh, we gotta, we're going to get a bunch right over here. And that might be it. We'll see. So, but this is what I, I love about this particular paint mixing formula. Um, it's a, a pretty easy formula. It's just craft paints and glue and a little bit of our hair serum, our coconut serum. But we can get amazing cells that pop up. And uh, this is just a simple flip cup. But it's a very cool way to make a very simple flip cup into something really dramatic and dynamic. So, and I really like the colors too. Um, I might want to get a couple more cells. I love this orange one popping up right here, um, but it's all alone. So I'm going to try to see if I can make a couple more of like that happen. Whoa, I think we did. <laughs> a couple more. There's a bunch now. So, but uh, cool, we'll let that go for a little bit. And uh, the, the, the torch, you don't need a lot of heat, just a, a flash of heat and the cells will, will pop up. So let's see here. I quite like it. And I normally don't like to tilt and stretch the cells too much after they've developed like this. I really like the shape, um, this incredibly organic, natural shape that they, they take on. Some people like to change them around and stretch them a little bit or um, alter them a little. I really like them just the way they are. Um, I think they're pretty amazing. So let's see, I might just leave it like that. Um, we've got this, I really like our big stripe down the center. Now we've got cells kind of spread out throughout. I like our orange, all the cells right on our stripe now. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. You'll notice there are a few of these cells that are very close together. Um, those are known as caterpillar cells. Um, I think Kathleen calls them caterpillar cells. Um, but uh, but I noticed that they, are, they show up usually where the paint wants to butt heads together, or if you did like a lip drag through your paint, where you kind of disturb the paint is where the caterpillar cells like to uh, kind of uh, kind of are formed. So right in here we had, this is where our two puddles collided when we pulled our cups off, and that's where our caterpillar cells are. So if you hate those things, I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, they don't bother me that much. But if you don't like them, I would recommend um, trying not to touch your paint puddles with, or do any lip drags or finger drags through there because that's where this, the caterpillars like to uh, appear. So, but um, I'm really, I'm pretty happy with it. We've got this big crazy purple cell, which is kind of out of place, but there's not a whole lot we can do about it um, at this stage. We could have tried to pour it off, but then we would have lost all of this beautiful orange right up here, this smoky orange color. So sometimes you just have to kind of live with things that you don't love in a painting um, and kind of just overlook those because, you know, it's hard to sacrifice one small 
part for the you know the greater good, so to speak. So, but that is a that is a, a glue and craft paint in silicone uh, painting. So now the once you're done with your torching, um, you could, if you wanted to, um, tilt a little bit very gently to kind of change the way the cells look. I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is take my uh, palette knife right here, and I'm going to scrape the bottom of my canvas because there's a lot of paint that likes to collect under there, and I like to scrape it off. And then you can turn your painting. And here's like, there's a bunch of paint on my palette knife. And there we go. So I'll move this aside. There's, there's not a whole lot of paint on my paper. We didn't tilt off a whole lot. I've got a little bare spot on my side of my canvas. Um, now you could normally scrape, scoop this all up and use it again, um, but this all has silicone in the paint. So just be aware of that. If you're using silicone uh, and you scoop up your paints, um, make sure you label your cup and uh, so you know that you have silicone in there because that can be a very unhappy discovery if you're doing a painting and you don't want the silicone in there and it, it pops up. So what I like to do is take like uh, my tissue. I use tissues a lot to wipe my hands and wipe my tools off. I'll take one of my cups. Here's the blue, my lid. I'll stick that on there. And I'll take my Sharpie and I'll either write on the top with an S or I put glue on there already because I want to know this is a glue-based uh, medium, glue-based paint, and I'll put a big S next to that so I know there's silicone in these leftover paints. And if I was to save the, uh, you know, the, the runoff paint, I would also label that that it has silicone in it as well. Um, I don't think I'll save this. There's not a lot there. And see here. But I'll just cover some of these up. I'll just show you one more. I'll show you with the orange. So again, I like to wipe the, the lip of my cup off with my tissue uh, before I put the lid on, because it can kind of get glued on if you uh, leave some paint on the top. And I'll just write on the side, I'll put a big old S there, so I know there's silicone in my paint. Okay, so there's one more look at our, uh, Donna wants to see it vertically, let's take a look. There's, there's one way, it might look cool with the blue, the lighter colors on the top. That's a pretty orientation like that. I like that a lot. So that is our super simple foolproof uh, paint mixing formula with school glue and, and craft paints and some coconut hair serum. And let me flip back here. And uh, do you have any other questions? Um, about this process or formula or anything else we covered today. And uh, to remind you, those two downloads, actually there's three downloads that I gave you today. The foolproof uh, paint mixing formulas, uh, that sheet is in your um, download section, as well as my easy paint mixing formula, which is pretty much my standard uh, flow trawl formula, which is two parts, flow trawl, one part paint, and then a little bit of water to get the proper consistency. And that's what I use most often for my paintings. And, and that's what I use with my, my tube paints, my Liquitex Basics, my Amsterdam paints, 
Master's Touch, Artist Loft, all of those things. That's my go-to easy formula. That's in there in both ounces and uh, milliliters, depending on where you're at. Um, so, all right. So let me see if there's any questions you might have while we're wrapping up here. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking about some color theory uh, things. We talked about color theory just a little bit today. I'm going to be showing you um, some easy color theory, kind of 101 stuff with my color wheel. I have some color wheels for you. You can download. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, values a little bit uh, and kind of how color, like color theory uh, ties into acrylic paint pouring because it is a little different than the standard way of painting with oils or acrylics with brushes and things like that. Um, all right. So let's see here. So, well, thanks for all the comments. Everyone likes the painting a lot. That's awesome. Thank you so much for the great comments. I'm happy you uh, um, found this interesting and uh, insightful and informative. And uh, all right. So I don't see any other comments. So with that, I think I will say, uh, have a great rest of your evening. Uh, please join me tomorrow. We're going to be talking about some very fun stuff. And I'll have some more downloads for you tomorrow. And uh, I look forward to seeing you then. Same time. And uh, same time, you can still check in at the uh, foolproof or the paint porn extravaganza page. Let me just throw that in the comments. One more time. And if you haven't signed up in that page yet, go ahead and sign up. You can get these downloads that I'm talking about and I'll also uh, uh, send you the replays for the our um, different live lessons here. And uh, you'll have access to all of those things. So thanks so much, everyone. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.